In today's session, we're going to take a look at Battery 2 and MIDI files, how to manipulate them, how to use them with Battery 2. The style of music that you're listening to here is obviously drum and bass. We've got a couple of different styles. We're going to show you how to make up these beats, specifically the beats today is what we're going to be looking at. Now, Battery 2, what is that? It's basically a sampler drum module, which means it's a sampler that's dedicated to drums. This is what it looks like. All the flashing lights are the sounds that are actually playing. Those are cells. We've programmed the sounds that you can hear on those cells that are active or flashing. Now, this looks a bit like uh, an MPC, which is made by Akai. Um, the MPC is a very famous and well-used drum module used from all the hip-hop tunes right up to top producers like Timberland and the Neptunes. The reason I'm mentioning that is because this sample battery is laid out in the same way as the MPC because it's not looking like a keyboard, it's got pads on it. And therefore, if you want to set up a drum pad to trigger the sounds in battery, it's quite a good way of using it. Now, battery can be standalone in other words, not used within a program, or you can use it as a plugin. Now, most people use a sequencer such as Cubase SX or Logic, and uh, we're today using Cubase SX, and we're going to use Battery 2 as a plugin within Cubase SX. That's what you're hearing at the moment, and uh, basically, we're going to show you how to make the beats that you're hearing now. So, let's get on with it. Here you see a new project in Cubase SX. First thing we're going to do is load battery into Cubase SX. So go to Devices, VST Instruments, click on an empty module and select Battery 2. Now we're going to load a kit and after we've loaded it in, we're going to show you a bit about this interface. So JC is on the mouse at the moment and he's just loading a hip hop patch and there you see a bunch of hip hop sounds have been loaded into the cells on the interface. Now JC is clicking on the cells and you can hear the sounds that are in there, the samples that the cells play. They've even got the bass sounds on this set. So, uh, I want to now show you what's happening up at the top of the interface. This section here is the master section. That is the master volume. If you turn that up and down, everything in the cells will go up and down. And um, the same will happen if you click and drag on that, as JC just did, you can bring it down and up in level. Moving on next to it, that's uh, how much memory is loaded into battery at any given time. Now, that's how many notes you can have playing at the same time. And then above it, you've got the meter. So uh, if you click a sound, you'll see that the level is recorded on the meter and you don't want it to go too red. And red is, if it was too loud, it would go on the right hand side. Okay, now we'll take a look in File. This is a very important menu. It's where you load the kits. You can load samples from here, but there's a better way of doing it. This is where you load your drum kits and then save them if you make changes to them. Okay, uh, down at the bottom of the interface, you can see this area here is for editing or manipulating the sound. It's kind of the fun bit. This is where you put your filters, change the length, the uh, compressor, compression, you can loop your sounds. Uh, this is the kind of uh, science factory, if you like, uh, where you can see the shape of the files. That's a shape of a file there. Now we're going to take a look at MIDI files. Before we start, you may well ask, what is a MIDI file? Well, it's something that we're going to use to trigger sounds with. 
A MIDI file is an arrangement of MIDI information, including MIDI notes, that can arrange sounds into a pattern. And the beauty of them is you can download them from the internet, get them off sample CDs. And basically, they arrange sounds into a pre-ordained pattern. So, we're going to import uh, a drum pattern now before we start loading our sounds in. And to do that, you go up to File, Import, and go down to MIDI File. Uh, we're not going to create a new project because we're already in a fresh project. So click on No. And what the computer is now doing is pointing to MIDI files on the hard drive. So there you go, that's what a MIDI file looks like when it's in a QuickTime format. And uh, we're going to open that one. It's a part of the drum and bass kits that are in the Point Blank Sample CD that we've made specially for our students to uh, get the best sounds, really. So check this one out. There it is. It's popped up like magic. Uh, Cubase automatically creates a MIDI track for you along with the MIDI file. And here you have an 8-bar drum pattern. So we're just going to drag the right locator to the right-hand side of the 8 bars. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is go back to the VST Instruments rack. There's our battery. Click on the icon and lo and behold it's all there. Now we're going to import a new kit or rather in load, we're going to load a new kit. So go to open and uh, select a drum and bass kit because this is a drum and bass MIDI file pattern that we're using and open it. And there it is loading all the different samples in a patch. It didn't find the sample we pointed it to, so we've now manually got to point it to uh, what it says up there, 24-inch fusion kick. So we're going into the sample CD, as created by Point Blank, going into battery kits, drum and bass, drums and samples. Lo and behold, there it is, the 24-inch fusion kick. Open that. And now the whole thing's loaded. Close battery, close this uh, VST Instruments window, select the channel, select your output at the moment, it's not connected so we want it to play battery 2. Rewind by cl clicking left locator or stop, Let's put the loop on, cycle mode and press play. So as you can see, it's a pretty cool beat, and it was fairly easy to get that going. You may well ask why I use MIDI files, well, this should give you your answer. As a beginner, or somebody at the beginning of their travels wanting to become a fantastic drum and bass, or hip-hop, or grime, or any kind of producer, rock, anything, you can get access to these MIDI files. And as you'll see in a second, you can then manipulate them and make them your own. Let's take a look inside this one. Now, as you can see, it's a bunch of dots all playing in a sequence. I'm just scrolling up and down using this blue thing on the right here because it's going up and down the keyboard that you can see on the left side. And each of these notes corresponds to a note on the keyboard. you'll see that if I click on any of these notes you can hear the individual parts making up the MIDI file. Now this is kind of good but obviously they're all at the moment jumbled up into the same piece at the moment and a professional producer doesn't work like this. You have to separate these parts out. 
So close the window. And what we're going to do is separate these parts. It's the process is called dissolving. 